Throughout history, humanity has been haunted by one enduring question, the mystery of death and the longing for immortality. But in an era shaped by advanced technology and artificial intelligence, is it possible to bring the dead back to life? That question no longer belongs solely to the realm of science fiction. In 2017, the world quietly marked the 50th anniversary of Dr. James Hiram Bedford's cryonic suspension, a man who, in 1967, became the first person in history to voluntarily enter a state of frozen sleep after death, hoping that science might one day bring him back. That dream has stirred both fascination and controversy for half a century. And today, in an age when technology has advanced farther than ever before, we revisit the story of Dr. Bedford and explore the astonishing strides humanity has made in the pursuit of one of its oldest ambitions, to conquer death. So fasten your seatbelt as we dive into today's mystery. But first, you'll have incredible luck if you like and subscribe before this video ends. James Hiram Bedford was a professor of psychology at the University of California and a veteran who had served during World War I. He was described as a calm and modest man, yet one who possessed a deep intellect and an insatiable curiosity about the world around him. Throughout the first half of the 20th century, he ventured into distant and remote lands, from the rainforests of the Amazon to the mountains of Africa, from the ancient ruins of Turkey to the snow-covered landscapes of Alaska, his life was a continuous journey marked by a relentless pursuit to understand the meaning of life and death. At the age of 72, Bedford was diagnosed with terminal kidney cancer. The disease had already metastasized to his lungs, and given the limits of medical treatment at the time, there was no hope of prolonging his life. But rather than surrendering to fate, Bedford made a choice that no one before him had dared to make. He became the first person in human history to volunteer to have his body cryogenically preserved after death, in the hope of one day being revived in a future world. Before taking his final breath, he left behind over $100,000 to fund the cryonic preservation of his body. But what made this decision extraordinary was not the money, nor the audacity of the act, but the unwavering belief he held in the power of science. He once said, I am not doing this because I believe I will be revived, I am doing this so that one day, my descendants might benefit from a breakthrough in human knowledge. Immediately after Bedford's heart stopped beating, a team of three researchers, among them Robert Nelson, who at the time was leading the Life Extension Society, began the process of preserving his body using cryonics. The first step in the procedure was to maintain circulation in order to prevent tissue decomposition. The doctors administered artificial respiration and performed chest compressions briefly before proceeding to drain all of the blood from his body. In its place, they injected a chemical solution into his veins, one capable of deeply penetrating tissue and reducing the formation of ice crystals, with the goal of protecting vital organs from freezing damage. Finally, Bedford's body was placed into a tank of liquid nitrogen cooled to minus 196 degrees Celsius, conditions believed to be sufficient to bring the human body into long-term suspended animation. However, the process was not without complications. At the time of Bedford's death, the specialized cryonic storage chamber was still under construction. While waiting for it to be completed, the research team was forced to improvise. Bedford's body was laid in a wooden coffin packed with ice and transported using a personal pickup truck. The situation grew even more complicated when tensions within Bedford's family began to flare. His ex-wife threatened to call the police if the body was brought into her home. With no other option, Nelson drove up into the remote hills of Topanga Canyon and temporarily stored Bedford's body at a friend's house. He later recalled, I was driving along those winding mountain roads at night with a body covered in ice lying in the back of the truck. It was insane, it was terrifying, but I believed I was doing the right thing. After several weeks of temporary storage in Topanga Canyon, Bedford's body was transferred to a cryonic preservation facility in the state of Arizona. There, he became the first and only individual to be maintained in a liquid nitrogen chamber operated by the Cryonic Society of California. Though the original goal was to sustain a state of suspended animation indefinitely, reality quickly began to test that ambition through financial difficulties, legal disputes, and even internal doubts voiced by members of Bedford's own family. 
By 1970, Bedford was moved yet again, this time to an experimental medical equipment manufacturer called Galiso. But this was not a professional cryonics facility. It was a manufacturing workshop with unfinished containment tanks and no clear guarantees. Instead of being housed in a stable and controlled environment, Bedford's body now rested among test components in conditions that no one could confidently claim were completely safe. His tumultuous journey would continue for many more years. In July of 1976, he was transferred once again, this time to a facility in California overseen by his own wife and son. While they honored Bedford's final wishes, other relatives in the family strongly opposed the decision. A lengthy legal battle ensued, and the legal fees slowly drained the $100,000 fund he had originally set aside to sustain his preservation. In 1982, after many attempts to secure a more permanent and reliable place of storage, the body of James Bedford was transferred to the Alcor Life Extension Foundation, today the leading cryonics organization in the world. There, he was placed into a modern storage unit located on the edge of the Sonoran Desert, a facility capable of maintaining a stable temperature of minus 196 degrees Celsius for extended periods of time. And finally, after 15 years of constant relocation, Bedford found what could be considered a place of rest, at least in a relative sense. If James Bedford was someone who deliberately chose to enter a state of suspended animation out of faith in science, then Mitsutaka Uchikoshi is living proof of the human body's miraculous ability to survive when pushed to the edge of despair. In October 2006, Mitsutaka Uchikoshi, a 35-year-old civil servant from Kobe, Japan, joined a hiking trip with friends on Mount Rocco. After a day of barbecuing, chatting, and enjoying the view, the group decided to descend the mountain by cable car but Uchikoshi chose to hike down alone along a small forest trail. It was a decision that nearly cost him his life. On the way down, Uchikoshi slipped and fell hard. The fall left him with a fractured pelvis and a head injury. He couldn't stand, and he had no way to call for help. At night, temperatures on Mount Rocco in autumn can drop to minus 10 degrees Celsius. The cold seeped into his muscles, reaching deep into his bones. Uchikoshi quickly lost consciousness but what no one could have expected was that he didn't die. He entered a state of hibernation. For the next 24 days, he lay unconscious in the forest while his body gradually slipped into a state of severe hypothermia. When a passing hiker finally stumbled upon him and called emergency services, Uchikoshi was on the brink of death. By the time he arrived at Kobe City General Hospital, doctors touched his skin and found that his entire body was ice cold. His core temperature had plummeted to extreme lows and several of his internal organs had nearly ceased functioning. According to modern medicine, those were the unmistakable signs of irreversible death. But then, something extraordinary happened. Doctors immediately began warming his body, stabilizing his circulation, and closely monitoring his vital signs. Over the course of more than 50 days of intensive treatment, they slowly realized that Uchikoshi's damaged organs were beginning to recover. Not only did he survive, but he was discharged without any lasting damage or serious complications. What stunned medical experts most was the possibility that Uchikoshi had entered a state similar to natural hibernation a rare but real physiological reaction in which the human body slows all metabolic activity to a minimum in order to conserve energy and preserve life. In that state, rather than shutting down completely, the brain had seemingly adjusted its energy use on its own, protecting its core functions from collapse. And it may have been this unrecorded biological mechanism that ultimately saved his life. As science continues to advance, hypothermia-based therapies used in emergency medicine have seen remarkable progress. In 2016, a groundbreaking study conducted at the University of Maryland School of Medicine led by Dr. Samuel Tisherman took therapeutic hypothermia to a new level. In this project, the doctors referred to their process as preservation and emergency resuscitation. The goal was to save patients suffering from massive blood loss, often the result of stab wounds, gunshots, or accidents, by slowing down the process of biological death. When a patient suffers from acute blood loss, the heart can stop beating within minutes. Brain damage begins as soon as four to six minutes after the heart stops, unless immediate intervention is provided. But with this new procedure, doctors can reduce the patient's body temperature to between 10 and 15 degrees Celsius, effectively bringing metabolic activity to a near standstill. In this state, the body enters what is essentially a form of medical hibernation, and the narrow window of survival that used to be measured in minutes can now be extended to several hours. This precious additional time allows surgeons to perform life-saving procedures that would have previously been impossible. Beyond its applications in medicine, hypothermic techniques are also being explored as a key technology for future space missions. 
NASA and several private companies, including SpaceX, have invested millions of dollars into researching the possibility of placing humans into induced hibernation during interplanetary journeys, such as missions to Mars, which can take anywhere from six to nine months. On missions of that scale, maintaining continuous life support for the crew presents an enormous challenge. But if astronauts could be placed into a state of suspended animation, energy consumption would drop dramatically, and the psychological and medical risks of long-duration spaceflight could be significantly reduced. If the story of Mitsutaka Uchikoshi left the scientific community bewildered due to its unprecedented and unexpected nature, then just a few years later, another case would once again leave researchers astonished. In early 2012, Swedish media reported what appeared to be an impossible survival story. A 44-year-old man was found trapped inside his car in a remote forested area in northern Sweden. The vehicle had been buried under a thick layer of snow, in extreme weather conditions where temperatures routinely dropped below minus 30 degrees Celsius. When rescue teams discovered him, they were almost certain they had arrived too late. The man was found lying motionless in the back seat, wrapped in an old sleeping bag. There were no clear signs of life. The car contained no food, and the fuel had long since run out. There was no heat. He had survived by eating snow, and eventually slipped into a semi-comatose state. Doctors at the local hospital later admitted that they could not clearly explain how the man had survived. By every known medical standard, prolonged exposure to such severe cold without a heat source, without food, and with little to no water should have resulted in certain death. Just like Uchikoshi, this case had undergone no medical intervention. There were no machines monitoring core temperature, no specialized nutritional solutions, and no technicians standing by to track vital signs. This was not a miracle. It may have been a biological clue about the hidden ability of the human body to transcend its own limits. And if that is true, then what exactly is stopping us from activating that ability on command? Today's story is not just about science, it's about belief. Belief in the future, in new boundaries of life, and in a potential that humanity has never fully dared to acknowledge. If what you've just heard made you reflect on the thin line between life and death, feel free to share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you'd like to continue joining us on this journey into the unexplained, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. We'll see you in the next video.